The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the reincarnation of Ring Around the Jabroni. Uh, normally we'll have three of us, but tonight it's just two competing. Two competing for Buckle Bomb Supremacy. Joining us here, making his way from Tennessee, the original creator of Ring Around the Jabroni, Mr. DMC Grizzle. How are you, sir? In the house, feeling fantastic. How are you, Sarah? I am great. And joining us from across the pond, Luke yeah. Anthony Walsh, but now apparently known as Brock Lesnar. Ladies Ooh. and gentlemen. Buckle Bomb Entertainment had a bit of an issue. So what did they do? Sarah Visick caught her phone and she called an audible and she brought in the man, the reigning, defending, undisputed Buckle Bomb champion of the world, Luke Anthony Walsh. Boom. Boom. <laughs> 22, baby. So here's how our show works. Um, if you've seen ESPN's Around the Horn, very similar. I'll throw out a bunch of topics to these guys. Um, typically, when there's three people, after six questions, the lowest score gets eliminated. And the final two compete on the final question. Um, I will throw out a question. You guys will take turns going back and forth, starting, um, making your arguments. If I like your argument, you get a point. One of the most points at the end of the show is our winner. All right. Are you guys ready? Bow and ready. Let's do it. So right. Daniel, we will start out with you. Lovely. Our first topic. Malachi Black has teased a new member for the House of Black faction this week. Who is best going to fit in this faction? So we know that it's Brody King, but I don't know if, if that if if the world knows that it's Mr. Brody King yet. Uh, and if it's if we're also going to have a third member, so I don't know if we're getting Brody King and somebody else. I'm not quite sure yet. I know we are getting him. Uh, they are tag team champions in PWG. And it's very exciting. Uh, I would like to think that there's also a third member. If it is the third member, I don't know who it is. I want it to be Sting, but it'll never be Sting. Luke, what are your thoughts? It will be Brody King. I think this 2022 has been the year that Brody King will make his mark. I mean, unfortunately, with the circumstances that Ring of Honor ha are, uh, are in, uh, where contracts are, are run out, I think they've expired since New Year's Eve. Um, he's free to run. And, of course, he's got history with Malachi back uh, in the past. Now he has the chance to step up on the main stage. I think this is the time where the House of Black really steps up and really does make an impact in, the, in AEW. This isn't going to be fun if we just keep agreeing with each other. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Who who else is going to be in that faction, Luke? Come on. I mean, there's, there's, this is the problem with AEW. There's so much talent within the roster that you've got a smorgasbord of, of people you could really choose from. I mean, obviously, Darby Allen and Sting for the face paint. That could work. That would be nice. Um, I know Black's affiliation with Andrade Alilo might be interesting. Um, what about Abaddon? Like, Abaddon seems to be thrown out there as a female part of the faction. It's quite easy to be Abaddon, but he could take any anybody really and 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 take him as under his wing. He could take Powerhouse Hobbs under his wing and, and turn him into a demonic character. That is something I'd be willing to see. Like he could, Malachi Black has that talent and has that aurora about him that he could bring in a main roster guy, a, a top guy, or could bring in somebody straight from dark and really bring in that influence, that storytelling, that AEW are really starting to master with Black, that, a that WWE just pissed against the wall uh, when he was facing the, the tag team champions uh, on the same WrestleMania week and losing all matches. Like, there is so much there where I could, like, push him to the moon. Both of you had good answers. You both earned a point. Um... I think they're both equal, so no bonus point for a winner. Um, I've also before Brody King, I've also heard rumors that Butcher and Bleed would be a part of the faction. That'd be cool. I think the Butcher's out with a torn bicep right now, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that would happen this week. But 
I'm, I'd, I'd be all for that. I'm cool with that. All right. So second cat, second question, Luke, we'll start with you this time. Celebrities in the Royal Rumble, EA or nay? Uh, we just saw Johnny Knoxville enter himself in the Royal Rumble. You know, we've seen Drew Carey in the past. What are your thoughts on celebrities in the Royal Rumble, Luke? In isolation, and from what we understand from Johnny Knoxville's post, it will be in isolation. It's it's beautiful. It's 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 just <laughs> oh, the, the, you, you need comedy in the Royal Rumble. Like it's it's something like we like last year we saw Gillian Hall show up in the Women's Rumble, and it was just just spectacular. <laughs> With um, Billy Kay, it was go- it was awesome. It was well, it, 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 like in, in in a match that that came down to Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley to see Gillian Hall and, and Billy Kay interact was was just the, the tonic that we all need. And I think it ha- it has its place. Like you said, two thousand and one um, with Drew Carey, it was phenomenal because it was it was it was boxed off. It wasn't affecting any main roster storylines. It wasn't interfering with anybody else. It was mm-hmm. a little bit here and there and it worked and it's fantastic now obviously we, we got bad bunny get involved last year and that was slightly different because that was building towards the, the mania event which you know he he turned out to be fantastic he, he hit a canadian destroyer at the end of it like that was that was superb and obviously the 24 7 title is, is is there for some shenanigans but johnny Knoxville has got history with the company of course going all the way back to some 2007 um where jackass were looking to do something with umaga obviously other things transpired that sort of affected that relationship, but it's something that I've wanted to do. I think Jackass Forever is coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Perfect opportunity. Well thought out. I'll, I'll give you a point on that one. Rizzle? I think you should let the Migos all come in as a single entry. And if one of them can make it to the end, they all get a chance at the WWE Championship. <laughs> but if you're, you know, I think I think the celebrities, it's okay. Um, it's one of those things you kind of have to go with a lot of them or a little. So I'm, I'd be I, if we had three celebrity entries into the women's rumble this year, I would actually be kind of happy with that. And I have been kind of interested to see how, how they're going to fill that out this year. Um, obviously, everything is better in moderation, and it's always better when you've got someone that's trained. Obviously, the, you know someone that can actually wrestle. We saw Bad Bunny; he actually trained; he can actually wrestle. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, so you would like to see someone kind of, you know, come in and either take it seriously or it can or it be, you know, just 100 percent complete comedy. Um, so I, you know, I, I certainly don't have a problem with it uh, on the on the safe side of things. You know, you don't want to be bringing a lot of people in, in into the locker room every week with, you know, our current global situations still happening. So, I mean, I guess you'd be kind of hesitant in um, inviting new people into your environment and your locker room. But other than that, uh, for the sake of entertainment, I got no problem with it. Very good. Uh, both well thought out. You both earned a point on this one. Um, now, when we have in future episodes, you know, we're going to have other podcasters on uh, from other groups. You might not normally see uh, work on getting some indie wrestlers on the show as well. Um, so every couple of questions, we'll give somebody a chance to introduce themselves, um, talk about whatever the projects they're working on. Uh, of course, this is a Buckle Bomb edition, so everyone here is from Buckle Bomb. Uh, but Daniel, why don't you talk about what else, and you got any other projects going on, something you want to promote, something you like? Well, I mean, we're going to be starting some, some Buckle Bomb Entertainment gaming content here very soon. We've been waiting for that AW game to come out for a while, but, you know, I've got a whole crazy kind of universe Mm-hmm. Made up on the on on the two K twenty. Uh, we've also got two K twenty two, you know, coming at some point this year, um, and just playing some other games in general. I've been playing lots of Mario Maker recently, uh, so you know we we want to switch it up a little bit here in terms of doing the gaming content. Obviously, I want to play games with all of you, and I want to have uh, you know I want to have welcome all challengers because I'm not the best gamer, but you know I'm not too shabby. Either. All about entertainment. It's all about fun and having a good time, and I think we want to bring you a lot of cool short videos this uh, this year of uh, you know all of us just hanging out and having a good time. And as Daniel pointed out, we we are on Twitch. We just started it a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's at Buckle Bomb Entertainment. Uh, we're doing watch alongs. We did a watch along for day one. Uh, we had up to five views at one point, which you know just starting out was pretty good. 
Um, this show will stream on Twitch as well. So look for future content. Let's get on to question number three. Daniel, you will go first on this one. Roman gets COVID. Insert Brock into the WWE title match. Brock wins. Who gets screwed on this exchange? Well, Big E gets screwed on on this exchange, obviously. And I look, I don't have a problem with you bringing Brock back. I don't have a problem with you uh, with any of this. Actually, I don't like the fact that Big E got pinned, and I don't like the fact that Big E was the fourth entrance. You even brought Brock Lesnar out after the champion. Like, what did you think was going to happen? It was mm-hmm. a great match. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, it's unfortunate that Roman has COVID, uh, and we hope that he is. We all know about his health health situation, so we hope that he's okay. It yeah. sounds like he is, so that's good. Um, you know, Vince is going to always change his mind all the time. I do give him credit though for taking, uh, for you know, having this situation thrown at him and doing something cool with it. The main event kind of saved the show. Um, in in lots of ways, although there were some other great matches that on there. Particularly, I thought Becky versus Liv was really good. They worked very very well together, and I hope they this have. was a new day with s- several more matches. Night. Yeah, I mean that, and that, and that was an awesome match. Even though you they know, hit a three D. Come on, they hit a three D. Freaking three D! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Danny, we'll award so you a point there. Uh, Luke, what about you? How do you feel? Um, Okay, let, let's stretch this out a little bit between day one and the Raw main event uh, that we had. I think the, the people who got screwed were Big E, Seth Rollins, and Kevin Owens. Um, Big E, such a sad way to end the title. I mean, um, original reports, according to Meltzer and uh, all the um, Brian Alvarez, was that he was set to retain. Um, plans were, were, were going forward, and obviously they called an audible. Um and it was an audible. Roman was set to go over as well if the match was to go ahead. So it was very unfortunate. But Big E losing out so soon was unfortunate. Maybe he could have held on for a few more weeks to the Rumble. And that would have been a great way to lose it. But Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens can put on a barnstormer. We knew that. And there's the story that they were kind of building up, but whether they were going to team up a little bit more and we could see a little uh, faction form between the two of them, two individuals who've had great clashes in the past. Um now, now they're now they're straight back out of the picture. Like it, it doesn't seem that great that they are now going to go to waste. And bear in mind that Kevin Owens had just signed a brand new contract. That new contract that nearly saw him go straight out to AEW. Is that what 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 do you have? What do you have for Kevin Owens that's going to drink drink him in? That's not a title picture, and it, it, it's afraid. But the big winner, of course, is Bobby Lashley. Um, his performance both on day one almost. Uh, passing out Brock Lesnar in the Hurt Lock and then obviously winning the Fatal 4-Way on Monday Night Raw to give us the title match at the Royal Rumble. Um, it's beef. All the beef. Brock against Bobby. Bring it on. Bobby versus Brock. I'm into it. Point for that one. Uh, Daniel, I'm going to give you a bonus point for calling him out on having the champion not be last, as per tradition. Drives me crazy. Bonus point. I was point upset. I was upset. Thank you. All right, Luke, you'll go first on this next one. Booker T said Bianca Belair was the number one female of 2021. Uh, it is noteworthy that he did give high praise to Thunder Rosa, or no, not Thunder Rosa, uh, Britt Baker had lots of high praise for her, but still gives Bianca Belair the number one female of 2021. Luke, agree or disagree? It's close, you know, it is so close. But she's just good shit. Britt Baker is the number one female of 2021. I'll tell you why. Bianca Belair had a barnstormer of 2021. She, of course, had the main event at WrestleMania against Sasha Banks. The emotion, the the moment, the, the KOD, the whips. that It was just insane. It took it to new heights uh, on the first night that fans were back in attendance. Rain delay to one side. But then came SummerSlam. And that 21 seconds that Becky Lynch came back uh, out of nowhere, turned heel and won the, the title off her and sent her sliding a little bit back down the card was damaged her profusely. And she's just grew out corner, but uh, her way back up, I'm sure you can now start to maybe talk to her, maybe even doing back-to-back rumble wins 
and, and going straight back to where she belongs for Dallas. But compare that to, to Britt Baker, D, M, D. It's, it, it, it's un- unrefutable. Her storyline with Tony Schiavone, mm-hmm. the lights out match, the, and just, just the, the Britsburg pop. And the the matches he she's putting on, and obviously her winning the title, best woman on the planet, without a shadow of a doubt, she has fought her way, and in, in, in a division that has been difficult to build since day one, and that's no no secret that Tony Khan has struggled with the women, but he has really gotten behind Britt Baker, and finally the sparks are starting to fly, and the, she is shining above and beyond, while she is the number one female wrestler of 2021 agree point two daniel first of all maki ito is clearly the number one woman of 2021 i don't see where the argument is i mean she always uh, told you she was number one <laughs> i mean she told us the <laughs> entire time. Uh, no it's it's you know I, I think if you pick anyone that that falls into that top five category that you know i'm okay with it and booker t is always going to be a homer on this one he's always going to say somebody from wwe um it's hard to argue with luke i mean she's so over she's so great uh she has probably the second best catchphrase in wrestling and her boyfriend has the first so i mean what are you gonna do but bianca's had a fantastic year um it was obviously marred a a little bit by SummerSlam. um you know you can make you can make some pretty strong arguments for somebody like Jade Cargill also, who's been like super dominant, but she hasn't had that huge signature win yet. So, I mean, obviously, I don't think that she she could be she's she's certainly part of the conversation, mostly because I'm talking about her right now. But uh, you know, you could you could throw her name in there. But I got I got no problem with them saying that whatsoever. It's fine. I'll give you the point. Uh, Luke earns a bonus point, though, for bringing up Bianca beating Sasha at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Bonus point for you, Luke. Damn right. Okay, so we're tied at five. Uh, three questions to go here. Okay. Question five is going to go to you first, Daniel. Shinsuke Nakamura wishes WWE and New Japan could cooperate. Well, don't we all? Yes, <laughs> nope. is, is that not? I mean, I could start fantasy booking here all day about who I'd like to see Okada face, who I'd like to see Hiromu Takahashi against, and all these fantastic people. I like Mister Master Watto himself. Um, of course, I wish that they could that they could cooperate. I think uh, if that had started maybe three or four years ago. Uh, AEW may not exist right now, or things would be incredibly different. Um, mm-hmm. We've obviously seen all the all the collaborations between New Japan and AEW so far, so there's no reason to think that. Actually, I don't want to say that. There's reason to believe that that kind of relationship would be very advantageous to both sides, especially since uh, the, the WWE has always been trying to get their foot into japan so you know somehow and it's never quite worked out so yes i also wish that they could cooperate end of i'll give you i'll give you a point for that luke (laughs) 2022 marks uh new japan's 50th year uh as a wrestling promotion and of course this is where the talks have begun as to whether shinsuke nakamura will return home into arguably his home promotion and where he's done his greatest work. Everybody remembers Wrestle Kingdom 9 and 10 with his match against AJ Styles, say Magnifique. It was a, 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 another stratosphere to the match they had at WrestleMania. No dick shots involved. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, the, the relationship with WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling in the past has been tenured. Uh, you go back to the Atelier uh, Noki days of you know, it, it being some sort of a working deal and it falling apart and obviously Anoki taking the title off back and then not being recognized and and all all the political stuff in the the late seventies, early eighties. However, we are in the world where the forbidden door has been pummeled by uh, AEW in the last 12 months. Um, In 2018, Chris Jericho went over to Wrestle Kingdom to fight Kenny Omega. 
technically under a WWE contract. He asked for uh, Vince's permission. He granted it. He fought Kenny Omega, and then he was on Raw 25 anniversary three weeks later. So it's doable. I mean, and, and, and if you Nakamura saying it's highly unlikely, but not impossible, yeah. is the uh, I think the, the quote that you gave. So you never know. Um, but my final point is that who would you, apart from Nakamura, who would you really want to see over there? I mean, obviously, like somebody like Roman Reigns, I don't think would work that that well with the Japanese style. I mean, you you put him against somebody like Okada, who you know the, the rainmaker himself. Like, we wouldn't really balance with the head of the. Like, how how do you weave that in? It doesn't really like fit. In. You, you have to be looking at people like Sami Zayn, people like Walter, um, Walter, people who are amazing, genuine menaces. People, Bron Breaker. It'd be the uh, ideal candidate because mm-hmm. some, somebody who can wrestle strong matches and wrestle the athletic standard that Japan requires. Cesaro versus Zack Saber Jr. Give it to me. Give it Tony to Antonio Cesaro is another candidate you can put forward. Um, they have to be able to play smart. They can't just chuck everybody over there in Japan. Um, so, but it would be interesting. We can all fantasy book, but agree. All right. We'll give you a point for that, Luke. Uh, no bonus points for anybody because nobody brought up the New Deal announced today. Uh, New Japan has been signed a TV deal with Access TV. Um, not everybody gets Access TV here. So, well, I mean, what, is, sorry, what is Access TV to a UK audience? What is Access? Access TV is a higher tier cable channel or cable network. Um, Impact is on Access or was on Access for a while. So, hey, you know how bad things are over here? They've only started to show Rampage over here in the UK. That's how things bad are with, with TV. <laughs> now. But that's a different argument. I could rant about that for about five minutes. It only I'll comes see. on 13 days later. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Luke, we're going to start with you for question number six here. Brock and Roman at WrestleMania. Title unification match. Yes or no? There's so many arguments to be said on both sides, and I think there is... Got to pick one side and argue it. I'm going to say no, because it doesn't require it. Now, a lot of people are moaning and sighing that we've seen Brock versus Roman before, and we have. WrestleMania 31, WrestleMania 34, SummerSlam 2018... We've seen it in, in all different forms. The hell, the, the steel cage match that went to a, to a smoshy finish. We've seen them interwoven in and out, in and out, and it's it, it's it's a story as old as John Cena and Randy Orton at this point. But we've never seen it in the form that we've got getting now. And obviously, Brock is showing a, a, a new side of him that we haven't really seen before. Apparently, both will be on Friday Night SmackDown with Roman hopefully being back after having COVID. Who knows what the story is? Obviously, obviously there's mileage to come with the Paul Heyman storyline. But title unification, I don't think Roman Reigns will be the champion. Uh, he the dogs the dogs. I think it now opens the door for him to lose the title to maybe, I don't know, whoever wins the Royal Rumble uh, on night one to make it a night two affair between Brock versus Roman. Um, but it, it doesn't require a tight unification. They save that for November in the so-called Big Four Survivor Series, which is, you know, even last year was was terrible. But you can book that for next November, maybe. They're back in Boston, I think. I believe they are. Um, it's 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 a Survivor Series gimmick. It's not for WrestleMania. All right. I mean, the match has been rumored. Uh, but we know how rumors go and plans change and Vince changes his mind for WrestleMania. Um, Daniel, what's your argument? Yeah, your nay? I don't think that these titles will be unified. I wish that they were. And I wish that they would turn back into the WWE title. And I, because I do not like the universal title. I never have. And I, it, to me, it represents the WWE being so stuck inward towards themselves and how they don't recognize wrestling or anything else around them. 
you know the WWE universe. It, it, it they don't it, it to me. It's it's not. It's in no way an inclusive title, and it has the word universal in it. It just it, it drives me crazy. It's never. I can't really think of anyone except for Roman's reign. Roman's reign right now. Um, uh, it's actually it's been a very good story, mm-hmm. but. I think for the most part, I mean, it's kind of a cursed title. I don't, I, I've, I've never been a huge fan of it. I think you could, you've got so many, so many different great wrestlers that you could let wrestle and have titles that represent great wrestling, as opposed to just something that says I'm the best in this little bubble, if that makes sense at all. So I kind of wish they would unify it. I don't think that they will. And um, I think it's the, it'll still be a match for one belt though. All right. Um, by the way, going back to day one, how great was Brock Lesnar's uh, imitation of Paul Heyman? It's fantastic. See, Pop. <laughs> it just shows Brock is very versatile. He can do comedy. More than just, you know, the Brock party when he won the money in the bank. Brock party is still one of the greatest things that ever happened. I still want the t-shirt. I never got it. It made me so happy. <laughs> At a time when Raw did not make me so happy. Okay, so we're down to the final question. Um, other shows, this will be where the lowest score gets eliminated. Uh, however, it's just the two of you. So I'm only going to award one point for this one. It'll determine the winner. You guys are tied. Uh, I'll let you debate before you see the question. Who's going to go first? Go on, go on, Daniel. You know you, know you want to take it first. I don't know what it is. CM Punk says he's opening to forming a long-term trio with Sting and Darby. Eventually, they're going to introduce trios titles. Who deserves to be the first trios champion? Would you like to go first? You, you go first, Daniel. Okay. Who deserves to be the first trio? Well, it now is the question: Who deserves to be the first trio? Who deserves champion? to be the inaugural trios champion? Okay. Let me first say on CM Punk with. Uh, with Sting and Darby, I think that's great because uh, trios don't always have to run together. So if they are going to have a trios match, you can put them together. You know that they're going to be together. You never have to wonder who's going to be in that spot, and they can all continue their uh, their roles elsewhere, whether it be singles or or tag or whatever. That being said, the first ever trios championship deserves to be. There's still a question of who deserves it and who's going to get it. I would have told you a year ago, Jurassic Express. Um, with Marco, actually, because I, I think Marco is great. But uh, we don't know. Now, where's Marco? Where's Marco? So um, I don't – I would be happy with you giving it to Death Triangle. I think they probably deserve it more than anybody. I think Pac super deserves a belt um, and for all, all the fantastic matches he's had so far. I do wish it was a singles title, but I just don't know how, how you do that necessarily. Um, when you want to talk about whether it should be the super click or anything like that, or the new undisputed era, what, what they're going to be, I don't know if you would say that they deserve it, but I wouldn't be upset with that either. Um, but I, I think that, I think that if you, I think my final answer is uh, death triangle. Okay. Luke. What, what, where, where to start with this? Now, obviously, when they tagged together, um, Sting, W, and CM Punk, it was magnificent. The face paint, the the symbolism of the the past and in, in Sting and the experience, the present of CM Punk and and hitting the GTS in the future that Darby Allen is still yet to offer to AEW shows that the talent is there and what CM Punk is doing and orchestrating in that company is nothing short of magnificent. However. I don't think he is fit for that trio's title. I think uh, DM Grizzle has a point. I think Death Triangle is favourites to go for it, but so is the Super Click. So is Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson. So so is um, a certain era who is undisputed and, you know, back together again. Um, if you had to pick one, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong. Uh, not really strong. Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish uh, to put it with him. He could be there by then. You never know. He'll be there by then. Um, something like that is, is made for them. But what, what you've got uh, within 
AEW right now, and something that WWE have failed to do is they've got the factions to be able to make factions uh, to make trios work. You've got the inner circle, you've got Death Triangle, you've got the Click, you've got um, Team Taz, you've got the Nightmare Collective, you've got so many different elements, so many different combinations of of, of people. You've even again the Lucha Brothers as, as could get involved as well as Jurassic Express. There's a, any number of combinations you could put together to uh, form that that, that division. Um, that would be nothing short of full talent, full potential. Um, could even live on Rampage as well. It could be a, a spotlight on there. There is so much scope that Tony Khan has to work for the trios. And if CM Punk, Sting and Derby challenge for that, I think it would be great, but I don't see them winning it. I think it goes to Death Triangle first. I'd also like to say, like, I think, and I, I think we've talked about this before, but if the Ring of Honor belts are going to continue to be defended in other other promotions, does do those end up being the, the trios tiles that we use for AW? I mean, it's interesting happened, isn't it? It's an interesting <laughs> question. They could do that. They have no they, problem they, with it. They could cross promote as they're doing with AAA. So it, it'd be it, again the forbidden door is no longer existing. So that you know to be able to spotlight Ring of Honor on AEW like they have, they've got Jay Lethal in the company now. For Christ's sake, they they, they could give R- Ring of Honor the boost and and the the kickstart it needs going into April to be able to get back on its feet and to. Uh, to really push Supercard of Honor. Who knows, could to be seeing some AEW stars on that card when it comes back up and running. If it comes back up and running. Um, interesting points by both of you guys, but you guys both went for the same trios team. Uh, don't forget, I'm pretty sure Gun Club is actually undefeated as a trios team. <laughs> Just a thought. I mean, they're probably not winning, but you never know. Billy well, Gunn, giving him a title at age, what, 60? 60. 60? If they so call themselves the Ass Boys, they deserve <laughs> to be the first ever trios titles. 100%. If you're going to put Ass Boys Billy on Gun, the Billy Gunn is 58. He's 58 years old. He looks and 38. So he looks great. He does look great. All right. So the inaugural winner for the first rendition of the return of Ring Around the Jabroni we're going to go with Daniel. Oh, you guys both had the same wow. answer, but you brought up the interesting point of, is wow. it going to be the Ring of Honor trios titles? I mean, you know, I swear, I, I've been hoping for these trios titles forever. So I hope that, and I think that this is the best possible way that you could get them in there, um, unless you're going to bring them over from Japan, which I'm also, well, I'm all for that. Um, you can you, you can have your own. A- AEW trio styles, but I think mm-hmm. it'd be a great way to cross promote with obviously other promotions, um, and uh, and a great way for us to bring more more talent that the AEW viewers have never seen to the United States. I mean, I ever since I've gotten into AEW, I've learned about so so many wrestlers that I would have never, oh, yeah. that I may have never seen before if I had only watched you know, WWE all the time and just watched any WWE content. So, I mean, it's it's probably my favorite thing about this company, and uh, I hope this is how they do it. Uh, we're going to bring Luke back on. Luke, I forgot to ask if you want to promote anything of yours special going on. I mean, I, I, there's things I'm working on. I'm, I'm not going to reveal too much to, to say, but what, watch this space. But, uh, yeah, GG to, uh, to Daniel. I wouldn't have uh, wanted to lose to anybody else but you. Um <laughs> Yeah, you, you, both you, these guys will be on future episodes, so keep an eye out for them. Keep an eye out. Uh, eventually, down the line, maybe towards the end of the year, we'll do a tournament of champions. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Have a great rest of your evening.